4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, great. And those of you who didn't raise your hand and are still thinking about it, just get with Angie Hastings, if you will. She's the one coordinating everything. So you bring and enjoy and have a nice time together. And Brother DJ, where are you at, man? DJ around in here? He might be out. DJ wanted to play a football game during that social time. I see no problem with that at all. And so if you guys want to get together and meet each other up, you go know, right here. All right, let's stand together and we'll sing in 305. Jesus paid it all. That's the title and the theme today. Jesus paid it all. Sing it out. Getting to know him. And then Wednesday at 5:30 is the evangelism team epic. 
And I'd like to talk with every single person that's been going on evangelism because there's some really cool stuff happening. I've never seen you guys so on fire. It's exciting. Sing with me as we continue.
another great day that the Lord has made. And our Bible verse is coming to us this morning from the book of Romans, chapter 5, and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See? Uh, we, we all know from uh, a little bit of experience in life we've had, and how great the experience in life we've had, we know for a fact that the cost of peace is always high. It carries a very, very high price today. But our, for our peace was purchased by Jesus' enormous sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God made sure the price of our rebellion was paid. But he didn't make us pay it because we could never have fulfilled our obligation. Through all eternity, we could not have come up with enough to, to pay our obligation for our sins. So, instead, God paid it himself. Amen. Amen. Through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to get on our knees. We need to thank God for making peace yes. and bring us back yes. to Him at such a great cost to Him. That's right. And we need to thank Jesus for willingly surrendering Himself to the horrible and cruel death on the cross. Think about these things, folks. Every day, thank God for the peace that's in your soul. The peace that was past all other things. Yes. Think about these things, folks. Pray about these things. And give God the glory and the praise and thank you him forever for much all of the all the peace of all the sacrifice that he gave. Mm -hmm. Thank Jesus for the sacrifice that he gave. Mm -hmm. Pray about the same That's all for today. Hey. Have you ever entertained angels unaware? Hey, Do you think? I guarantee you he looks just like that. Because he's not what you think. Right. He's not going to be some clean-cut guy in a suit, all right? You might be surprised. Right. He's going to present with himself in ways that you don't think. So make certain, my friends, that you're careful about that one. Who here has ever talked? Stephen Carroll, stand up, if you will, man. Stand up. Who here has ever talked to Stephen Carroll yet about getting that pantry item in for the pantry, for the food pantry? If not, so if you have to say, I'll get with it. I'll get with it. Let me see. I can put some food in there a couple days. You're good. Some groceries. Okay, great. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Have a seat, brother, if you will. Please with God about the 17th and the 20th. Also, October 15th, the carnival. I cannot believe how many people are coming to that thing. Not just from what I've seen online, but what people are telling me. We really need help. I know Tommy's going to talk to you about that need. We really don't need anything. God's got it all taken care of. But... I'd like to have you help, if you will, to sign up for that. There have been a lot of people signing up. There's a lot of people helping. But I just, as time passes and more are coming, I think it's good that we all get involved where we can. All right? Very good. Hey, Michael, come on up here. Guide us in the scripture reading today. And ushers, why don't you come down while he's doing the scripture reading and be ready for the offer. And we're going to turn to Philippians chapter 3. And verse number 7 and 8. And read with me. It says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and you count them but dumb, that I may win 
Christ. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for bringing us all safe here to church, Lord. Help us to remember the tremendous price that you paid, Lord, for our salvation, Lord. And help us remember that what we give, Lord, is absolutely nothing in comparison to that, Lord. Because you've given us everything, Lord. So help us give back, Lord, what you would have us to give. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
I want to make sure that they can hear real well. And it's not just because of you 50, 60 people that are watching on Facebook, but it's because there's going to be some of you who are sitting in the pews, and some of you who are out in your cars right now that are listening to me. You're going to want to get this message out to a whole lot of people by hitting the share button on Facebook. The reason why is because every one of you knows somebody who isn't saved, right? Amen. Every one of you knows somebody who isn't saved. And here's another thing you probably know of. You probably know of someone who thinks they are saved and you know that they're not. But, Pastor, that puts a question in my head. Maybe I'm not saved. Well, that's just the question I was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> Are you really saved? Do you really know Christ? Is it that we're trusting in a religious act, a religious relic? Right. Maybe our family heritage? Maybe something that I was at one point? Man, I was a dot, dot, dot at one point in my life. You know, my friends, I want you to just think through this for a minute and be honest with yourself. Because today is the day of salvation. Let me say that with you. Today is the day of salvation. salvation. As you're flipping over to Philippians chapter 3, I tell you this. During the middle of the summer, we had the opportunity to go into the middle of the city here in Seaford. And I grabbed the megaphone and I started to preach. Now when I do this, I don't get out there and blood curdlingly tell everybody how terrible they are. I get out there and tell them how much God loves them Amen. and how we are all sinners, we are, but that God wants to save us and that his desire is for us to repent and to come unto him. And the Lord works. He does some marvelous things. I guess a lot of you do understand that in May of 2019 to 18, when we were here first with my family and with the First Baptist Church, in those times during May, in March and April, I had come and I was preaching. We'd been a part of this. And then we started going back and forth for about a month or so. After about a month or so, we were having something like 40, 42, 44 people that met. And now there are 233 faithful people here. You say, why does that stuff kind of happen? Well, it's because the Holy Spirit of God is using real young people like Barry C. <laughs> to go out and speak the truth of the gospel. I'm telling you, Jeremiah, if you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, he basically says, I can't do that. He says, listen, I chose you before you were even born. Did you hear that, by the way? <laughs> I chose you before you were born. I chose you while you were still in your mama's belly. I chose you to go and to do this work. Yes. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. My friend, our unborn children, children. Amen. Yes. Yes. You yes. better yes. believe they are. Yes. Now, that's just a side note. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Can you say those four words with me? Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Lord. Let me just say it real loud. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, that phrase right there in chapter 3 and verse 1 is one of the most taken out of context phrases in the whole Bible. Say, now, Pastor, what does it mean? Well, I'm going to tell you what it means. You know, it's mentioned again in chapter 4. You'll see the concept mentioned in chapter 2. You'll see it mentioned again in verse 3 of this same chapter, rejoice in the Lord. Well, what is he saying? I'll give you a concept. When we were out there in the middle of the summer handing out bottles of water to people, so we did was we got a bunch of coolers. And we put them on all the corners over there, Royal Farms, right there in the middle of the city. And we had all these waters, cold, good cold water. And people would come to the corner and they'd be driving up and they'd hear that nutty preacher was very serious. Singing and praying and talking about Jesus and telling them about the things of God. And they'd see over there that water, I'd see them going. <laughs> I'd never see that, but I thought you'd be considered. Thank you. They'd go over and they'd take a bottle and they'd put it in their hands. And some of those people would say, here, here's a dollar. He said, no, it says free water. It's free water. No, here's a dollar. He said, no, it's free. <laughs> but I, I just want to, no, okay? <laughs> it's free. We love you. We want 
want you to take it. Why? Because it's an illustration of Jesus Christ saving us. Right. You can't give him a dollar. You can't give him 50 cents. Right. You can't give him 25 cents. You can't give him five million dollars to get into heaven. The title of the message this morning is simple. Jesus paid it all. Can I give a tip? <laughs> Jesus paid it all. Can I give a tip? Well, absolutely not. Michelle, yesterday, was down at the Teen Challenge with us. Yesterday, no, Friday. And we were down in the parking lot because they've got some space back in there that nobody uses. So, Rochelle, in the worst way, wanted us to drive, you know. Rochelle, stand up. And just stand on the view. Nobody's going to get mad. Stand up. There you go. Now, does she look like she ought to be driving a 15 passenger van? <laughs> But she wasn't driving the worst way, right? So we took her and put her in my lap, and she took the steering wheel. And I tell you what, she didn't do it half bad. Except for that, she would have hit something several times a minute if it hadn't been for me sitting there, <laughs> making sure that the brake was on and applied, and then every so often we would recorrect. Are you getting me at all what I'm saying? <coughs> When we get the idea that somehow we have a part in salvation, right. we kind of need to rethink that thing. That's right. I want to preach this message in the most loving way I possibly can. But I'm going to say this phrase, and I don't want it to offend any of us, okay? Whether it's a Baptist or a Methodist <laughs> or a Catholic, and I'm Baptist, now get this. Whether it's a Mormon or Jehovah's Witness, if anything you believe, Relates to you helping Jesus right. save you. Yep. Right. Preach. That's right, brother. We need to rethink that. Yes, yeah. sir. Amen. I really, really, I don't mean to say that Baptists have it right. That's right. Okay? I'd say it's pretty good, but I would not say that Baptists have it right. Understand, here in our church, none of us are right. You know who's right? Jesus. God is right. Amen. The Bible is right. Amen. And here's what happens is when we submit to what is right, things are right. The religious world was not invented by God. Amen. Okay. The religious world was not invented by God. Amen. God invented ways and means to humble ourselves. That's what God invented. Yes. Religiosity was invented to build us up. All right? Now, pure religion and undefiled in the scriptures is not what most people conceptualize as modern day religion. Pure religion and undefiled is this to visit the fatherless and the widowed come on, come on. and to keep thyself unspotted from the world. That's yes. different from what people say today. Amen. The campaign of religiosity was started by Satan. And it starts with the idea that we as humans are good. Right. We're good. Although Romans 3 and verse 23 tells us just the opposite. Right. Romans 3 and verse 23 exclaims that we are sinners. All live sin and come short of the glory of God. And Jeremiah 17, 9 says that we are all depraved. We're wicked. We're hell bound. Our hearts are dirty. Jeremiah 17, 9 is what we'll go for. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now get this. Above all things, it is wicked. It is deceitful. It is wrong. That's what my heart is. Now, nobody wants to hear that. And God is the only one that will actually say it. Because <laughs> none of us will say it about ourselves. Let's be honest, right? We don't want to say that about ourselves. If somebody comes to me and they say, I'm going to be going to heaven because I've been fairly good. If you've ever said that, I want you to listen to this sermon today. I'm going to heaven because my mom and dad were Christians and I'm a Christian. If you've ever said that, I want you to listen real good today, okay? I'm going to heaven because I was baptized. If you've ever said that, I want you to listen real good to that. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Let's put that up. The idea is that 
were basically good. You know, I ask a small child if they're good. You know what a small child will say? <coughs> They'll say, well, yes, of course I am. I'm a good person. I deserve to be whatever the Lord wants me to be. Quote, unquote. I deserve it. How many of you have ever said that prayer? You see, here's the deal. Is you and I, According to the scripture, because of our deceitfulness, because of our wickedness, we don't deserve heaven. Right. First Corinthians 13, verse 11 says this. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. Spake. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. See, when I was a kid, I thought I was clean. I thought I was innocent. When anyone would ever say to me, oh, you're such a good little boy, I'd say, yes, I am. <laughs> I sure am. But then when we grew up and our minds matured and we looked around at the world, a lot of us started to realize it's not them and us. It's not the good people and the bad people. It's just Bad people. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 14 clarifies something for us to know. It says, every man is brutish in his knowledge. Jeremiah 10, 14. In other words, you know what the word brutish literally, literally translated from the Hebrew is? That's stupid. <laughs> That's what it means. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and there's no breath in them. All right. I had, when I was up in Massachusetts, I had someone tell me one time at Calvary Baptist in Hanson, you, you might remember, uh, that there was a guy named Mark, and his wife was kind of, or my, Mark, and she was kind of Catholic. And she used to say, there's a lot of beauty in the Catholic Church. Listen, I'm not getting on Catholics, because Baptists and everybody else have this problem. We all have the same problem. But as she talked about that, her husband came to me and he said, listen, you talk about salvation as exclusive to Jesus Christ. And I said, yes, it is. Right. You, you talk about how if you just don't have just Jesus, that, that you're not going to heaven. And I said, well, that's true. If I don't trust just in what Christ did in his finished work, then I can't go to heaven. So he took up a spoon and he took a cup and he said, you see that? That could be Jesus Christ. I said, okay. He said, is it still Jesus Christ? And what I thought of since is, if that spoon is made of fentanyl, it certainly is. If that spoon is made of poison, it certainly is. Why? Because, my friends, you may think you have Jesus Christ, but when your mind has been poisoned against him to add to him, then we cannot be saved. That's right. Amen. The blood alone right. applies. Right. Must give us salvation. Say, now, Pastor, tell me what you mean from the Scriptures, because I see the illustrations, I hear what you're saying, but I want to read the Word of God. And I understand that. Let's do that, okay? Let's do that right now. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1, Paul has spent two chapters here explaining why Christ alone is all that is ever needed for our salvation. You can run through those two chapters, chapter 1 and chapter 2, and it will tell you you don't need to be baptized, you don't need to burn candles, you don't need to do some kind of Lord's Supper thing, you don't have to be in church every Sunday. But my friends, Jesus alone saved. He tells us that over and over again. Now, verse 1 of chapter 3 says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Now, why does he say that? Well, because he wants us to be joyful in Jesus. No. It's misrepresented. It's misconstrued. It's misset, quoted. It's taken out of its context so often then I think we really believe that. That's not what this is saying. He says this, to write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous. I'm going to write it again. I'll say it again. Philippians, for you it is safe to understand this. Understand. Rejoice in the Lord. Listen, rejoice in the Lord exclusively. Look, 1 John chapter 1. <coughs> And verse 7c says this. The blood of Jesus.
Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from how much sin? All oh. sin. But you mean I can't pay a tip? Is that what that says, that I can't pay a tip? Mm. Tell me, yes or no? Yes. Yes, you can't pay a tip. That's right. But Paul says, to write the same thing to you again, to me indeed, is not grievous. He says it again. Look, rejoice in the Lord. Look up Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 10 through 12. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 10 through 12. Look at what this says. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So, do you sacrifice him again when you have the Lord's Supper? No. Do you sacrifice him again whenever you have someone baptized? No. Do you sacrifice him again every time we come to church? Well, no. These religious actions, get this, these religious actions don't save anybody. That's right. Now, they are ordinances that the Lord instituted, but they cannot save you. They cannot do anything to you. Imagine a child trying to come. What, what, would, it, what would it be like here if Lydia, if Lydia came to you and said, Daddy, somebody gave me a dollar. Okay, Lydia. Hey, Daddy, somebody gave me a dollar. And you say, Daddy, can I pay you to be my dad? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he, he was going to take it. Evil man. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine that? That's almost sick, isn't it? Right. Daddy, can I pay you to be my dad? How many of you would take it? What an awful thing that would be for us to do. Can you expect God to? <laughs> you expect the perfect, matchlessly pure maker of the universe to take whatever you want to pay him wow. to get into heaven, whether that be a good action, some kind of a deed, your baptism, Candles being burned, something about church related to the Lord's Supper. He won't take it. That's right. That's you know why? <coughs> Jesus paid it The reason he won't take it is because he doesn't want it. You know what he wants? Look at verse 11. The Bible says this. The Bible tells us every priest standing daily. Guess what, you guys? This still happens today. Every priest standing in the daily ministry and offering oftentimes saying, oh, 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 offering the same sacrifices, which can what? Never. That's in your ancient of days Bible, the Holy Bible. That is in holy writ. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't go in for the Catholic Bible. I give you all kinds of reasons for that. I can show you that. I don't have time to talk about it today. But the Catholic Bible says the same thing. The Catholic Bible says that same thing. And the priests won't read it. Say, now, Pastor, talk about Baptist. Because, and you're right. We should. This old church right here. Stands for what it ought to stand for biblically, but we misunderstand and misrepresent what just happened this morning. We will say that water somehow can cleanse me. You know that's not true. Right. That's right. That's right. No Amen. physical thing can ever do a spiritual thing. Amen. I'll say it over and over and clarify. Paul says. Paul says it doesn't bother me to say it over and over again. Look at verse two. Beware of the dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision, which he meant is the cutting away of the flesh, or the at that time it was circumcision. Said, we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit. Those that what? Say it again. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Are you getting it now? Hey, 
Are you getting it now? Yes. Rejoice in the Lord. Why? We rejoice in who for our salvation? We rejoice in Christ <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, he said. Amen. And he said it over and over again in chapter 1, chapter 2, and then he gets to chapter 3 and he says, I don't mind telling you again. <laughs> hey. So let's look very briefly at a couple questions. Number one, what physical act or thing do we put our trust in for entrance into heaven? What physical thing do you put your trust in? Well, I was baptized. Did that save you? No, it didn't. Well, then what do I do here, Pastor? Here's what you do. Contritely and brokenly come before Christ. Yes. And say, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't make you the Lord to begin with. But I throw away my baptism. I renounce my religion. I renounce everything but you, Lord Jesus Christ, of heaven and glory. Amen. I renounce everything but the God of glory who made all things. I renounce every religious thing, every idea that I possibly could that would get me to heaven. And I look to Jesus Christ alone. Yeah. And I look at his shed blood yeah. or what he did on the cross. Do you know what he did? He finished the work. Yeah. How much work is to be done if something is finished? None. None. First John 1 7 says that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from how much sin? Oh. So how much sin is left to be cleansed with baptism? None. How much sin is left to be cleansed with candle burning? None. How much sin is left to be cleansed with the Lord's Supper? How much sin is left to be cleansed with your going to church? We are the circumcision. Why? Jesus Christ is who we rejoice in. It's only Him. I have no confidence in anything else, Paul says. And so he says, be so very careful of three things, he says. Be careful of your circumcision. Because he says, it seems like you guys are thinking because you're circumcised, you're going to hell. And then he says, be careful of the dogs. Because there's a whole lot of people out there saying all kinds of different things. And he says, be careful of evil religious workers. Hey, get them out of your mind. If you say, I only trust in Jesus. Okay, that's good. How many would say, I only trust in Jesus. Amen. Okay, great. Let's do a small test to make sure that's true. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15 tells us to beware of false prophets. Has anyone ever told you that because you were baptized, you were saved? Can I tell you this? Abraham was never baptized. Is right. he in heaven? Yeah. Yeah. David was never <laughs> baptized. Is he in heaven? Yeah. Jeremiah was never baptized. Is he in heaven? Yes. The thief on the cross was never baptized. Is he in heaven? Yes. The head of organizations, those who were healed in their beds of sickness that were headed to die, were never baptized. Are they in heaven? Yes. So baptism does to get you to heaven. <laughs> The Lord's Supper. That is funny. Did the Philippian jailer take the Lord's Supper? No. Did Jairus take the Lord's Supper? No. Did the Ethiopian eunuch take the Lord's Supper? No. Then the Lord's Supper can't save you because these men, according to the Bible, went straight to heaven. heaven. What did they do? Nothing. Christ did it all. Amen. So what do I do? <laughs> well, people ask Peter that. What shall we do then? He said in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, Repent ye therefore yes. and be converted that yes. your sins may be blotted out. Amen. Now no one wants to hear that. <laughs> but it's exactly what God says to do in Acts 3 and verse 19. He said, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time for repentance shall come from the presence of the Lord. What do you need to do to be saved? Trust in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The blood must cover that sin. Yes. Through the blood of Jesus Christ alone I am saved. Well, what yes. about going to church, Pastor? Maybe that will save me. What about rites and rituals, commitments and prayers? What about the loss of my salvation? Oh, that's a big one. How we cheapen the blood of Christ yeah. by saying we can lose salvation. That's right, yeah. That's right. How we cheapen the blood of Christ when he says in John 10 and verse 28, if you will, 
my sheep hear my voice. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Amen. But Jesus lied there. That's all there is to it. I don't think so. My Savior and Lord and perfect King would never lie. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out Amen. of my hand. Amen. Jesus did not lie in any minute detail when he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. But you still have to get baptized. And you still have to. No. No. In fact, if you put that in him, you've ruined it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He alone is the cup. Yes. It has nothing to do with the spoon. Right. Say, well, what about baptism? Well, it's the first act of obedience after salvation, but my only Savior is Jesus Christ. Not a drop of water can save you. Right. Not a single thing that I do can save you. Right. Now get this. Here's the second question. What religious pedigree do I trust in? <laughs> what religious pedigree do I trust in? Hey, look at verse 4. Read it out loud with me. Here's Paul's assessment on religious pedigree. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. You ready? Here we go. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am born. Do you trust in what you've done right. in the flesh? Do you trust in your baptism? You say, Pastor, this is really hard for me because I love my family. I love my family too. But my Bible tells me in Luke 14, 26, that in comparison to my love for Christ, my, my love for family needs to look like hate. That's, those are not high words. That's Jesus Christ. Right. Again, pure Christ. Look at verse 5. Circumcised the eighth day of stock of Israel, the tribe of Israel, and Hebrew of Hebrews, touching the law of heresy, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness in the law, blameless. Paul was circumcised, just like Christ said. Well, what about my baptism as a baby? Well, Paul was circumcised like Christ, and he said it was trash. It didn't matter. If you're baptized as a baby, how's that better than having been circumcised on the eighth day according to Israel, exactly what Jesus Christ did? No, it's not better than that. And Paul said it was nothing. It didn't mean anything. Paul was born a Benjamite, but he said it didn't help. What about some religious writer passage? It doesn't help. Paul studied under Gamaliel for 14 years. He grew the Hebrews. Have you lived what you believe to be a relatively pure life? Well, look at what he says here about himself. Look at verse 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law. Blameless. Yes. And what did Paul say to all that meant? Well, let's read what Paul thinks that meant. Verse 7, But well, what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count, look at this, A, L, L, all things, all things, but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I suffered the loss of all things, and you count them but dumb. He says, all my education, all my history, my family history, everything related to me in the Hebrew, sitting there and getting circumcised, all the things that happened to me as a religious leader, all the greatness, he says, it's just like garbage. That's right. Do you believe that? Yes. I sure hope so. Right. Because the only thing that matters is the blood of Jesus Christ, what he's done on that cross. And here, my friends, we must understand, he saw it all. He counted it all. Every kind of pedigree, every religious action, everything he'd ever done to him was just excrements, is what it <coughs> means, yes. literally. So that he could do what? Win Christ. Listen to me, my friend. If anything, is added to this. It's not one. That's right. That's right. If anything is added to this, 
It can't be one. So final question. What are my most prized religious symbols and relics? Saw a guy the other day, I went and visited him, he was in his house, he said, it's all about that right there. I looked over on the wall and there was a picture of what he thought was imagination of Jesus Christ. I go out every morning and I, I kiss him. I kiss him. Every morning I kiss him. Here's what Paul said. The pictures of Christ, the necklaces that we think are so valuable, the seven-step program, the nine-mark program, the oils and waters and holy waters and healing balms and everything else that Satan has invented to make us think of other things besides Jesus Christ brings us to this reality. It's all dumb. That's right. Yes. <laughs> what about my religious or physical family? Look at Luke 14, verse 26. Luke 14, verse 26. Came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief, that's one, verse 26. And if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Can you just grasp this and understand this? Grasp this, will you? The disciples were no different than you. When they gave up everything for Christ, Christ today expects the same. Amen. Yeah. His desire is that we'll stop being religious and start being truthful. Amen. His desire is that we'll start grabbing a hold of him and say, Oh God, please forgive me. Yes. And help me. Oh God, please, for Jesus' sake, help me. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can say. Yes. Right. Now, you know what? That anxiety that I just demonstrated, it only has to be for a second. Because the very next second, he'll come and fill you. <laughs> he'll take over. You know what that anxiety is? It's a jumping off point. Let me tell you what that anxiety is. That anxiety is that we're standing on a precipice. You know, when I was a kid, there was a rock quarry near our house. And with this, I closed. That rock quarry was one of the most fun places, I'm telling you. Ken made him took us over there with all the teenagers. And he never told your parents about it because he didn't want to get scared. To you. But no, I'm, just I'm sure you knew. But in any case, we didn't have signed permission forms like we do today, I guess. Or maybe we did. I don't know. In any case, we were out there. And I'm standing on this cliff. And I'm telling you, it must have gone down 50 feet. And all my friends were grabbing that big old rope and swinging out into that water and doing woo 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 woo. And when I say high, I mean it was high, it was huge. And I remember standing there thinking to myself, I want to have fun like that. I just scared to death to do it. And finally, I grabbed a hold of that rope and I swung out over that thing and I let go. And the exhilaration that filled my heart was just crazy. You know why? I wasn't trusting in anything. Nothing. But that somehow God was going to keep me from breaking my neck. <laughs> now listen. If you get to a point where everything that you know of, that's religious, will be set aside. And you decide today, listen, to die. Listen, to take your last natural spiritual breath. And you do this. Look, look up here. You do this. God, I'm trusting you. You see how that works? I've got to give up everything but Christ. Yes. To really be saved. Have you done that? Very much. Would you bow your head and close your eyes and think for just a minute? Paul said his pedigree, all his religious things, everything he planned, 
Everything he knew would be a good religious thing. All of his training, his circumcision, his relics, garbage, dumb, excrement. Are you sure you've only trusted Christ? Or do you need to talk to somebody to make sure that that's all of your trust in him? There's someone that would say, Pastor, I really need to be saved today. I, I'm not 100% sure that if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. I just don't have that security. And I'll be honest enough to let you know that by the upraised hand. Slip your hand up if that's you. I'll be honest to let, to let you know that. I just don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Anybody? All right. Stand with me if you will, dear one. There are people coming if you need to come. You say, Pastor, I still want to talk to somebody about that because I just want to be sure. Come right now, won't you? Workers are stepping out. Christians are coming to pray. There's someone saying, I, I need to step out. I, I really need to be sure I'm saved. Is that you? I just need to be sure I'm saved. Come on down. Won't you? Say, oh, but I, I feel embarrassed. Well, Garrett was probably a little bit concerned about having to be baptized again. Garrett doesn't care because he wanted to do right. Do you want to do right? Well, then don't let, don't let pride keep you from really going to heaven. Because five seconds into eternity, you will have wished you'd taken this opportunity. Is there somebody? Turn to him 305, won't you? For just a minute. There's some that have come, others are on their knees. If you want to come, you say, I want to pray. I just want to pray for people. Hymn 305. Hymn 305. You want to just come and pray for people, do it. But if you want to just pray for our community, pray for Sussex County. That, that's fine too. But if you need to come and be saved. Maybe you need to really make that first step of obedience. Baptism is a thing. It really is. It just doesn't say it, that's all. Baptism is something you do for daddy because it's something daddy wants. But it's not something that makes him your daddy. That's right. You understand? Nothing makes him your daddy except for that you receive the brother, Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that makes you his son. Say, won't you, won't you sing with me? Let's sing together, my friend. I hear the Savior say, I stray. eternity in hell. And yes, it does exist. Jesus Christ spent 33% of his entire ministry talking about nothing but hell. 33%. Come if you will, please, my dear brethren, you say, 
Why go on and on? Because he's coming soon and I know it. I can feel it. I am certain he can bust through the sky this afternoon. And I do not want to be one of those pastors that did not give my all to you to make sure that you're saved. I just won't do it. Sing with me that last verse, won't you? And when before the throne I stand impossible that every single one of you are saved. It may be that you are. It may be that you are. And that's a blessing to me. And I love it that you're here. I'm glad we spent this time together. I hope and pray that if you need to talk that you'll call me or write to me. Do anything. Because boy, I tell you, it's an important issue. I love you. You have a good day. What a blessing it was to preach to you. I hope tonight you'll come back. That wedding is going to be fun. Great, great time of fellowship. Everybody's